My name is Francesco Garuti. I am the product manager of uh, MKS Italy. And I will introduce you a basic concept in solid state microwave, which is frequency change in resonant cavities. In detail, I will describe some basic concept of microwave heating. Then we will see basic differences between monomodal and multimodal cavities. And after that, we will analyze differences between a magnetron-based solution and a solid-state solution. So first of all, let's talk about the VSWR, which is Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. This is a parameter which indicates the ratio of maximum and minimum level of voltage in the transmission line. In other words, this means how much reflected power we have in our cavities. When a wave travels from generator to a load, if the load impedance is not matched, there is also a reflected wave from the load back to the generator. So if this parameter is equal to one, we have no reflection, complete power transfer. If this parameter is high, we have a lot of reflection. So that means no power transfer. The target is to have it as low as possible to avoid failures, but also to maximize efficiency in energy transfer. So let's now take a look to a typical uh, microwave heating system involving a multimodal cavity. The typical example of a multimodal cavity is a domestic oven. You see um, what is the electrical field distribution after uh, three seconds and after stabilization. The important thing in this case um, is that if you enter with a known frequency in a multimodal cavity, the intensity of the answer is proportional to the stimulation. In other words, the more you give, the more you get. The problem, let's say, in this case is that um, the overall efficiency from line to the load is usually around 50%. This is often due to the broad variety of loads that we have to heat. So we can say as a conclusion that a multimodal cavity is not focused on a specific load. Okay, here you see instead a typical monomodal cavity, which is focused on a specific product. In this case, uh, no hotspots are generated and energy is focused in one specific point. The graph uh, shows that there is a temperature increase in the mid part of the load as a function of time. Uh, in uh, six seconds of heating. The animation shows how the temperature is distributed in the load, and as you can see, uh, no hotspots are generated. This is regardless that the source is a solid state or a magnetron based solution. This is linked to the cavity itself. So let's look closer to a monomodal cavity which is called also resonant cavity. If you enter in a monomodal cavity with a known frequency, the intensity of the answer depends both on initial stimulation, but also on how we are distant from the resonance frequency typical of that cavity. Because the monomodal cavity have a resonant frequency. 
Moreover, if we enter with a frequency which is exactly equal to the resonance frequency of the cavity, the cavity itself answers amplifying the stimulation. So you have to think uh, to a guitar chord, for example, or to a crystal glass, or the typical example of the bridge with soldiers marching onto it. Again, this happens regardless of the source. In fact, you can see that we can have two options. One is using the solid state and the other is using the conventional magnetron solution. We will see that the efficiency in, in this case using the solid state is roughly 70% from line to load. So we gain almost 20% of energy efficiency. Now we analyze a true example uh, where we design the cavity for drying, uh, a monomodal cavity. Here you have some values of uh, RF power required for that specific process. And here um, we have uh, the monomodal cavity design resonant frequency. So in this case, the cavity was designed to resonate at 2460 megahertz, which is a typical emission frequency of magnetron, in other words, um, in a specific condition of the load. So we designed the cavity uh, with the center frequency of 2460 in a specific condition of the load. But this design simulation do not take in consideration the heat we are generating, so the thermal effect on the load and on the applicator, the dielectric properties changing during the process, and the phase change, the possible phase change of the product from liquid to gas, for example. <clears throat> So what happens with the magnetron? The magnetron emits at 2460 always. So it has a fixed frequency. As you can see from the marker, the pink marker is always stuck uh, at 20, 2460. So there is just one moment uh, when the frequency of the magnetron is matched with the frequency of the chamber. In all the other moments, we are losing efficiency. You can see that when the process starts with, a, let's say, a wet product, the best coupling frequency is slightly below, so it's 2455. Then, during the drying process, we, we arrive to a specific point where the best coupling frequency is 2460. But then what happens is that uh, the best coupling frequency moves again and while the microwave frequency, of course, stays still. At the end of the process, we are close to 2480 MHz, and this means that we are almost 20 MHz far from the frequency emission of the magnetron. So, what if we use solid state? In our experimental setup, we used our 550 watt um, solid state generator, which is operating at 2.45 gigahertz and is capable of varying the frequency of plus minus 50 megahertz. The generator has built in circulators and passive loads, allowing to continuously monitor reflective power. It can be operated in variable frequency mode, uh, but also in fre fixed frequency mode. So here you see the difference. In yellow, the marker of the magnetron, while in green, red and blue, you can see the frequency step of the product while drying. So you have cavity resonance at process start with product wet. Then you have cavity resonance halfway drying process 
and then you have cavity resonance at process end with product dry. So the good thing is that we can follow this frequency using solid state. The side effect is that we don't have reflected power anymore. Hence, we can use less forward power and we gain efficiency. As a conclusion, in general, to improve heat transfer from the source to the load, to a specific load, it is the necessary to design a monomodal cavity, also called resonant cavity, designed specifically for that load. Numerical simulation allowed to rapidly design an efficient microwave cavity with center frequency around 2460 MHz and the use of a solid state generator compared to traditional microwave solution reduced power needs of 20% due to the capability to change the frequency, thus adapting to the change of resonant frequency of the system cavity load while drying.